happy with it today. Um, so let's let's cut these ley lines from the sideboard. I think against living ends, like we have a lot of ways to self fill our graveyard. We have um, fulminator living ends, just not that popular. I think it's probably probably fine. Um, am I really gonna be tragic slip pilled? I kind of am. I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite the Tragic Slip Pill. Over the Victim of Night. Something that we've done in the past and I've liked. And then I think we can try to play maybe Pithy Needle for the Yawgmoth matchup, which is a pretty tough matchup. We can also play Dothy Voidwalker, which is burst with no discard. We can also play like four Thoughtseize in the sideboard, which I don't love. Um, could Stone of Eurish be good? Eh. Something the I I think I just want to play like if I'm gonna play three Cyber Cards to Yawgmoth, I just want like three Needles probably. Uh this this would not be an Urza Saga deck, I I think. Or like it would be very different and and worse probably. Yeah, like yeah. When I say let's play three needles for Yawgmoth, since that's that's probably the you know the matchup I want to hedge for a bit more. I think like one more Cyber slot. We could do something like two Fatal Push, also two Tragic Slip, one Dismember. A couple pushes would go a long way against Hammer. Do I really feel like I need three answers to Murktide? I guess Tragic Slip is also pretty good against Hammer. A Spell Bomb? A Singleton Spell Bomb? I don't know. Play like one Turok on the board, maybe? Play a Turok on the board. We have, there is a main deck or Borg. I think I'm just kind of comfortable saying we have four Cauldrons for Graveyard Hate, and then we have this Fulminator Mage plan against Living End, and we, we fill our own Graveyard a lot. I think it's like, likely good enough to win sometimes. Um, I think we'll just sideboard a Turok. I think the first truck's good. Can we, okay, please somebody tell me why you want to add Urza Saga to this deck. So, I'm, so somebody tell me what why you want Saga. With like, like what are we tutoring with Saga? It's like, what are we cutting? What are we cutting to add the Saga tutor targets? You know. Truck or Shieldred? Ooh. Shieldred's probably better. Maybe we go down, uh, down a needle, down a truck, play two shieldreds. I kind of like that. We need that many brick dice. Can we have four mages? The thing is, like, mages are just too slow against Tron on the draw. The mages are also like, you bring them in over the crusaders in some matchups where the uh, where the uh, crusaders are bad. Did I cancel the trade? I don't think I did. Okay, let's keep this. Uh, I have not seriously considered Metallic Mimic. I think that that card is not good, in a word. Okay, up against Scales. Immediately punished for losing my Ley Lines, I guess. But the Needles will help, I suppose. Uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is definitely our plan A here. Uh, would love to have been on the play, though. Mystic Tech. Hear me out, green black. Okay, one second. Okay, so we got here. We got Lot with Troll. I do like Lot with Troll. Um, you've got to done the very classic thing of like take a spike deck raise the curve significantly with three more three drops three four drops and just keep the same number of lands uh i think ink moth nexus in your lot with troll deck is like just not feasible either especially when you're only playing 20 lands or maybe maybe not not feasible but like when you're only you would need like 23 lands i think realistically for that to be you know get to a, a better a good enough number yeah if we wanted to play i'm feeling pretty good but I'll shield it on 20 lands. Not super ideal, but it gets... In the matchups you bring them in, like, they go pretty late. You'll usually be able to cast them. Um, 
It's like, yeah, you need like three more lands of the stack. So like, I, I think maybe just like you're not playing the companies. Oh, man, the draw is very, so good. We're playing fetches in monoblock because of blood gas. Also, what did you cut? You're not playing the grave crawlers. Like your your carrying features get a lot worse without the grave crawlers, but I agree that they are kind of weak. Yeah, you're also like, how are you doing on Coco hits? So you have like you have like very few three drops for Coco. Like you're you're hitting like a lot of one drops, which I don't like very much. Like to some extent, it is what it is, but. So I think there's a good chance my opponent kills my priest in response. He also maybe just won't care about it, which would be like pretty fair, I suppose. So why don't we go ahead and ping the ballista? I'm kind of hoping that they kill the priest because then I can activate it twice because I have a cauldron, but. I don't know, Gr Grist is, you know, good. Um. I did consider going more this route, but it's just like you just can't you can't play Ink Moth and I, I don't think you're super far off, but I would maybe just think that you can't really play company in this shell. Okay, so do I want to activate priest in response here? It doesn't seem like that necessarily does anything. So we kind of need to find a walking ballista here. Or I guess another bowmaster, like make some sector ravager to save ballista. Okay, we, I got my wish, I suppose. Although maybe I should have wished for something else. Tron with the 17 months. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the resub. So in response, they're pinging the priest. So now I exiled my ballista. Counter here. That's what Ringstorm. It's, the Ringstorm deck is probably very good at the moment. That would be my my guess. Oh, sorry, I missed a ping. Let's respond to chat. Hopefully that one damage doesn't end up costing us too much. Probably be okay. Got them down to not that much. I, I, I don't know how much they misplayed here. Feels like they misplayed a little bit. Okay, you don't need to be too scared of that, I think. I hope. They can only animate one Ink Moth here, so you should be able to Edict this. Man, it's kind of crazy to beat this draw from scales on the draw. Obviously, we, you have to have Priest to even have a chance. So here we go. Carrying Feeder, Grave Crawler. Sack the Grave Crawler one time so we can ping the Ink Moth Nexus. Oh wait, we can't ping. We can so we can still ping the ink moth just with the. Sorry, we can't. We can't do it because we have to sack the carrion feeder. So I guess I just ping them once. But I can. Yeah, I can just still use the bowmaster. So they're not gonna try to save their thing because it doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? With me having ballista. Okay, and then we just play Carrion Feeder, Grave Crawler again. Pass back. Why not attack first? I, I'm not. This is my only non-summoning sick creature. I need to tap it to use this. There's right. You can still remove the counter. Oh, I can remove the. I could ping twice, right? Ping twice. Okay, so now I, they could be at 19 here. But this was good enough. Yeah, the the, pre, the priest lock is just so crazy against the creature decks. Okay, so I'm going to bring in both Needles. 
all of the removal spells. Cut the Crusaders. Cut the Unearths. And then I need to think about Break the Ice and or Fulminator. I think we want some Fulminators on the play, some Break the Ice on the draw. Let's do two Break the Ice on the draw, cutting fourth Gravecrawler, fourth Bowmaster. Uh, we played against Bean Gorias. It was yesterday we played against all scam and all beans. We played against one scam last league, no normal bean deck. No, we lost the Grixis in game three. I, I boarded in these removal spells for Shieldred and they just never played a Shieldred. I suppose unclear if there was ever any Shieldreds to begin with. Pindlehaven. Gonna be tough to win. On the mold five with no priest, but can we have like a cheesy break the ice maybe? Carrying feeder blood gas is also like a lot of a lot of pressure. All right, commence cheesy break the ice, I suppose. Ah, oh, cauldron's so good against my. <laughs> I mean, just cauldron is so good in the cauldron mirrors, of course. Uh, I. Uh, I mean, priest is just like. The card, but I think I think that's this being is this is close enough to time walk that I want to do this. Like the construct token can be kind of dangerous too. Yeah, we're actually playing tragic slip. I'm not sure that it's correct, but I'm 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 biting the tragic slip pill. Ballista on zero. Okay, tough game. They do only have one land, though. King Bloodgast in response has got to be wrong, right? Just not playing around the land, I guess. Oh, yeah, but you just get to do this. Yeah, sure. Sure, I, I, can, I can get behind this line, I guess. They had to. Well, they could have killed the Priest instead. I, I, maybe they were still supposed to kill the Priest. I'm not sure. Crack the fetch. Well, the problem with cracking the fetch is then they get to exile the bloodgast, and then like I'm not I'm not edicting anything. I'd rather I just like like I think I just like let the thing die, and the next turn I have an edict loaded with two bloodgasts with the fetch available. I feel like I feel like this makes more sense to me, but like yeah, I, I, I agree that fetching in response is the cool line. I think this might have been the correct line though. I I do wish that the correct line could always be the cool line though. As do we all. So I think we just start off attack with both Bloodgast and then activate the Priest. And then they'll... Cauldron, there's a boss probably. And kill my priest. Oh, they're fucking up. Great, love that. Huge news. Okay, so they lose two. I draw a card. Bring back this blood ghasts. Play a crawler. Pass. Cool. Well, cheesy break the ice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Sinkhole. Five and one of the. Okay, on the draw. Let's see if we are up against the bean deck for our Crusaders. 
the world record for fastest trophy in MTG. I mean, it's almost not certainly known. I'm sure whoever trophied the fastest, like, didn't think twice about it, just, like, rejoined. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, opponent in the tank on their first play, so they scam. I don't know, maybe not. If I had to guess, I've trophied it himself spells again 30 minutes. Yeah, I believe it. What's the rationale by a main deck for X and Crusader? Uh, there's just, it's so good against the bean decks. And like yesterday, like like half of our matches were beans and the other half was scam. It was like just everywhere yesterday. And I, I think, I think uh, like Crusader is also like, it's just like not that bad across the field. It's, it's so, so difficult to kill. And in the matchups that it is bad in, you know, you can simply... Um, okay, it's kind of sad that we don't have our ley lines. They probably take my cauldron since that is my graveyard hate here. No citrus supplier, no carrion feeder. These are all like pretty important cards to have in this matchup. Okay, I'm down to supplier here. Hope for the best. We build over a Crusader. Next turn, if assuming they don't live again first, I'll Bowmaster ping my supplier probably. Waker of Waves, that card is pretty good. Cycle Street Wraith. Cycle Street Wraith. Finds a third land. Very tough for them to not have a living in next turn, and. Don't think I'm beating a living end anymore, just like with my natural mills. Not without a cauldron, at least. Oh, grief. <laughs> Good grief. It took Bloodgast, which is uh, certainly a decision. No changes to the format, huh? Alright, let's pivot back to this plan, I guess. Build over a Carrion Feeder and a Walking Blister, so if we top deck a Cauldron, we're not that far from lethal. I think a Grief Band will push Living In to Tier 1. There are builds of the deck that don't play Grief that are fine. I, I don't even consider Living In to really be a Tier 1 modern deck at the moment. You ever ping my Bowmaster here? I don't think so. I think, like, you know, I, I want to be able to kill them if they don't, if they somehow just don't have the, the Cascader. Yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised when people think there is a combo in this deck. I don't... There's not. Although, if I, I guess if I, if I draw Ballista here... I was, I, sorry, if I draw Cauldron off the top, I, I do think we could win. But they, I guess with this Architects... I'm never drawing a cauldron. I guess Shadows just assume I'm not ever going to be playing this pile of cards without a combo, but Crusader's just really good and you grow with your cauldron. It's very good to turn this into a carrion feeder specifically or a blista. Yeah, if we were to draw a cauldron, we cauldron this into a, a blista. Sack one, two, three four, five, six, seven times. Which is still not enough. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we, we could maybe mill over a grave crawler. If you played a fetch, you could have shuffled your top. That's true, yeah. Should have played around it. Okay, so Fulminator's in. Over the Crusaders. I think mostly just that. What makes Crusader good? It's, un it's, it's it's protection from red and white is all, almost unkillable in modern. And specifically is like anti-bean tech. And it is it is interesting to to play a deck like this that has a good angle of attack against bean stock, which is like the advantage of this over like scales or Yawgmoth, because like those decks are just so difficult to contend with. Um, we'll get another one lander here. This hand's very good though, let's keep. Back to Bloodgast, I think. Did I see this? The Grixis deck or Man, Dak posts so many lists. 
Teferi could be playable in the bean build due to the amount of draws in these beans. What is what the fuck does this card do? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know what Teferi Tempora Pilgrim does. I can't remember at least. Okay, Brothers War card. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi. So I don't like that when you cast this, you don't immediately get the counters from any beans you need to play it to cast another spell. So you can zero draw a card, minus two, make a two two whenever you draw a card, put a counter on this creature. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control, returns it to their hand, they shuffle each done the permanent they control to the center's library. I don't know. I'm not very excited about this card. I'm definitely not play three copies excited. <laughs> I wish that I wish I guess it it does it does make creatures that can win the game so, or like you know, pressure the opponent. So that's nice. Fulminator. Oh, too bad. Seems like relatively underpowered, but. Not not like a not like a you know awful idea. Have a hard time imagining you really actually want to play it. Yeah, so I want to be um, pinging my own Stitcher supplier um, after I attack for two twice in this spot. I think. Otherwise, if we weren't going to do that, then we probably should have um, just used the Cauldron as Graveyard Hate, but I think I'm just so in on, like, finding a Fulminator Mage off this mill. It seems fine. So I milled over Carrion Feeder, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, Stitcher Supplier. So let's unearth the Supplier. Find a grave crawler. Still no fulminator, unfortunately. But we're actually new the priest in the yard is actually a very big deal. Yeah, same supplier. I guess I'll let this happen, but I'm almost 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 always next laying the waker here before they can respond to this with the violent outburst. And I get to put another counter on the supplier so I can ping it and kill it again in response to a living end. Very funny to see this line of text. Think your version of beans is better than turns version? I think turns version is probably better at the moment, which is kind of funny because we started with the version of turns, then the Bloodbraid Elf was built was better when we found it, and then the metagame has been changing a lot and Things are kind of up in the air. Uh, I liked Tristan's turns version a lot. I think it's probably better than the version I had. Uh, but I, I also think like you just like have to keep evolving the deck too. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass here. So we have lethal next turn with the bowmaster and the grave crawler. So let's just go and mill some more against a possible living end. Can't play the cauldron because they did that in my instep. Who is Trish working for that version of the deck? You, you can find it on MTG Goldfish Top Eight of the Last Mocks. You can find it on Bamzing Twitter. You can find it on Fire Shoes Twitter. I'm sure someone in chat, you know, maybe someone in chat will be nice and link it. Oh my gosh, I didn't sorry, just responding to chat. I forget to bowmaster here. It's kinda it's kind of okay. It's not, it's not okay. The extra damage is really relevant here.
Force of negation, huh? We didn't want to shock them. I was I was just responding to chat and I, I made a misplay. We are we're we're just super ahead here though if they don't if their last two cards aren't green card endurance somehow. What's the plan for the burn matchup? Just race them, your mana base isn't that painful. We're we we too will burn earlier. Doesn't seem to be much of a problem. Okay, so the supplier gets to counter the architect's trigger, so they're targeting they get to target themselves with the architect, I guess. They're pretty dead. Here's a picture of Mingu's. Yeah, so Mingu was playing the deck, so thank you for somebody for finding it. Yeah, so this version is playing Ardent Plea over Bloodbraid Elf, so you can play Force of Negation. It's playing 70 cards in the main deck. It's playing Eagles of the North for white card pitch count. Main decking two Commandeer. Main decking Bring to Light. Main decking Murder's Cut. Main decking four Omnath. Very, very interesting build. Um, and this list top eight of the, uh, the mocks. Why not sack some creatures with the army? With the army? The army doesn't sacrifice creatures. I didn't have a sack out in play. Fury, what the fuck, dude? I hate living in so much. Eagles also is fetch plans for blood. Sure, sure, sure. So we milled over another blood gas. So if we draw a land off the top, we have four lethal attackers. I did, I did punch pretty bad, though. It's okay. It's real, you know. They would probably be at one instead of two, though, because they were just with the other thing. So not, like, really that different, but, like, I could have top-deck a Bowmaster or something. Yeah, so are they going to try to play around me top-decking a land for these blood ghasts? Wow, attack only with Architects. Interesting. So, I'm supposed to play Priest and then Chump Block with Ink Moth Nexus. Don't really think the Nexus is doing much more than this, so let's take this block. I'm not sure what they can have. We we beat it. We beat a living end here. We, if they had a removal spell, they would have just bounced the the ink moth maybe. Kind of unreal that that's their card here. I also think I just have to sack the priest here since the three the three one changes the math pretty significantly. That being said, we get to make them... So they, they're going to lose two creatures here. So let's say they're going to lose two three power creatures. Then they're going to have 13 damage on the backswing. Which is not going to be... Not going to be enough to kill me at least. This is this is kind of like an absurd game to win. If we, if we do win... They had so so much premium interaction at like really relevant moments. Should the Nexus be Mutavolt? I'm I want to be to play to see the Nexus. They could be Mutavolts instead. It's like you, they they do make your Crusaders a lot better to have like the extra infect damage available. Aim for outburst. I I, I I outburst for lethal damage. Yeah. You had a lethal line when they killed the Chris Cauldron. Did I? Man, the Waker is their other card. It's so crazy. Exile Carrion Feeder, Sack Crawler, Excalcy Bowmaster's least 7 damage. I know I missed like 1 damage off the Bowmaster earlier. 
We had the win when they cast the Force of Vigor in our instep. Axel Carrion Feeder, Sacking Crawler, Sacking Super Masters. Was at least seven. Okay. Yeah, you can sideboard the Crusader. I, I think I'm happy enough with them in the main deck at the moment. They top their scry. They scry to the bottom. Yeah, but you also say in your post here, I think we cut Crusader and Nexus. Crusader is an insane card, but most games we win aren't with Crusader. I mean, we just, Crusader is an insane card. Let's, let's just main deck it. It's so good in the, I think it's so good in the format as a whole. You can cut them post-board, but I think they... Like, they're just really ne almost never that bad. Like, they're bad against Living End, but most, most like, three-mana creatures are bad against Living End. Okay, so if they Living End, they lose. So they're going to just play this as a 2-2. So they're dead to a land, they're dead to a cauldron, they're dead to a ballista, they're dead to a bloodgast, they're dead to... Uh, not dead to a bowmaster. Okay, GG. We're, we're also like, you know, 5 and 1 on the day. I, I feel like the formula of the deck's doing pretty well. I have to play game 3 on the draw though. Anyone with everything you play? Well, a lot of it is the off-stream testing. I do a, a lot more losing off-stream than I do on-stream. But I also don't win with everything I play, of course. Wait, what? Oh, I did put back the blista, sorry. That was, I, didn't, I, thought, I thought I was clicking cancel. How bad would Omnix be in the shell? I mean, that card is like kind of weak overall. I, I'm not like very excited to register that card. We 4 wonder firstly, we lost playing for the trophy against Grixis Control. Yeah, our first match was against a Gorios Bean deck, um, and Crusader, like, soloed, soloed them. Not as many beans today, unfortunately. I pitched a Street Wraith. They took Ballista, okay, because the other cards... Are better for me via living end, I guess. Yeah, I think let's not play. Well, I guess if we don't play a berserker, then it just gets griefed. I think scam cyborg should be running for crusader. I think maybe children is better than crusader for them, but like like in this deck, like crusader is a lot better too because we have plenty of ways to buff it or. Maybe not plenty. We have some ways to buff it. And we have the Ink Moths to, like, complement the plan. I'm not sure that it's necessarily good in Scam, but... It doesn't sound particularly bad in Scam, either. So hopefully they just don't go for a turn 3 Living End. Get the Fulminator plan going. Notably, they didn't have any 1-mana Cyclers in their hand. Oh, they hit Oliphant off their Waker. It's tough. Wow, tap Steam Vents. I want to actually draw a card here. Try to dig for a Cauldron specifically. Well, not in very good shape. But they just don't have a Cascader somehow. And we draw the best possible. Holy shit. <laughs> Basic land, kind of tough, but I guess I'm not... Don't have any more, uh... Okay, I do have more Fulminators, after all.
Well, they don't have another land. Or if they do, it's a, a land that they are sandbagging against the Fulminator. We just draw another basic, unfortunately. I do acknowledge if these were Muta Vaults, they'd be at minus eight life from here. Yeah, it'd be a little bit better, huh? Okay, Petty Theft by Fulminator. Okay, they're not going to play that Steam Bits without having a living end here, so we lose. Tough. It could be could be correct, but I I think again I think it really complements the Crusaders. And and also like Cauldron on an Ink Moth can get pretty crazy. It can still use some games. It's, it's like a, it's a lot better with Cauldron, I think. Turn into an Ink Moth or or turn into a Blista or Carrion Feeder. Okay. Grave crawler go. Basic planes. Am I ever going to cycle unearth this turn? To try to just slam Crusader turn three. Let's play a cauldron. Yeah, I do think you could maybe go more in on uh, the counters and the Ozolith. You can play Champion of the Perished maybe too, but this seemed a bit better to me. Because like, like if you if you play Priest of the Forgotten Gods, you just have like such a better, you have a good like backup Cauldron plan in this deck. Okay. Turn three, Anointed Peacekeeper, huh? Name Frexian Crusader. So this one's cost five. I guess they all cost five. So yeah, we just do the thing then. Sack the carrying feeder to itself. And the Crusader itself is a zombie, but... No, dude, come... Oh, fuck. I haven't played much against Anointed Peacekeeper. I forgot that, uh... It also makes activated abilities cost more. So I could have lethal, so if I didn't play Gravecrawler, I sacked this Gravecrawler for four, in fact, next turn. Pay two, pay, play the Gravecrawler, pay two mana, sack the Gravecrawler, then, um... Oh, then I guess I, I, I can't also exile, though, so... Wait, wait, that doesn't work. That being said, like... Like they're they're pretty they're just we're just two turn clocking them here. We should be fine, I guess. They like the scales deck with cyborg fulminator bris. I didn't see it, but it sounds kinda like copium. It doesn't really seem like a good plan in like any matchup, I don't know. Yeah, the, the problem with Champion of the Parish is you don't have enough zombies. We're playing a lot of non-zombies still. But I, I did I did certainly consider it. Um, it's something to think about on your radar. Maybe build a deck in a slightly different way somehow. Yeah, it's like, like Fulminator's like, Grispo seems so tough to cast and like... It's still, you're still not going to be that good against four color. Triple Grave Crawler, I guess. Crusader's just such a nightmare card to see for so many opponents. Priest of Forgotten God is definitely also super important to matchups like this. 
Treasure Slip better than push. Well, it kills the Burktide is kind of the thought. Um, it also kills a creature with a hammer on it. Does not kill a creature with two hammers on it, for what it's worth. Yeah, if they just spend their turn activating Demolition Field, all my Ink Moths should be okay. Anointed Peacekeeper. So if they don't have a Solitude here, we should be doing great. So they named Dismember, which is probably correct, huh? So let's go play Bowmaster. Oh, they, they, they do have Solitude, I guess. Should be okay, because we can Cauldron the Priest next turn, or, sh or I should say it should be okay. Well, it's actually not, because then they... They're gonna get to... Demolition Field me, maybe. They pitched another Anointed Peacekeeper. Okay. Sanctifier means I can't use my priest anymore. But I do have, you know, Ballista to kill Sanctifier also. Another out to the card of this matchup. But then they have a Ghost Quarter. They Ghost Quarter my Swamp, which sucks. So I can play a two drop, but then I'm kind of behind against this demolition field. I guess I sh probably should just still play the cauldron. Oh wait, I want to. Sorry, I want to just cauldron the ballista instead of. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking. And then we just pass, right? Oh, wait, sorry, I needed... The Ballista can't kill this. I can't. I guess I can't kill the Sanctifier, but... I can kill the Arbiter. Yeah, this still should be fine. Dismember Arbiter. They have Anointed Peacekeeper on Dismember. It costs two extra mana. Yeah, I know we can ping the Arbiter. We don't need to do it yet, though. Why not ping the Peacekeeper, then dismember Arbiter? I guess I, I suppose I didn't really feel the need to do it yet. I, I still don't feel the need to. Very confused why they're putting it here. It's kind of great news for me, though. All right, so let's go block here. Sacrifice the Bowmaster. Kill the Arbiter. Animate the Nexus. Counter on the Nexus. They have double um, demolition field here, so let's just go main phase. Kill this. And I can attack with my carrion feeder. Pew Pew with the 25 months. Squin with the 12. Happy anniversary. Okay, they decide no blocks. 
so let's just let this happen so I can sack the orc army block sack. And it's a really big deal here that I can cauldron the carrion feeder if it, if it, if they have a removal spell, because I got the uh, sanctifier off the board. And we can uh, Crusader turn this into a uh, Ballista Carrion Feeder, which is, of course, a big part of the idea of this build. I can also just dismember this, right? Seems really good, but playing Crusader seems better. You ever think it's crazy that Carrion Feeder managed to sneak its way into being playable this day and age? Not really, Carrion Feeder is a great card. So, let's let this target happen. Extra counter here, four total counters. Sacrifice the Ink Moth Nexus, I think. Kill the Anointed Peacekeeper, then play Frexian Crusader post combat. We'll also sack the Carrion Feeder, too. Yeah, Karen Feeder is one of the best sack outlets ever made. This card's awesome, just so good. Yeah, another terrible MH2 card though. Okay, pretty clear turn, I suppose. Play Priest, Cauldron, Carrion Feeder, attack for three. Dismember the Solitude in combat. And if they do something, Ooh. Well, I guess them doing this. Oh, do this doing now, so I can't um, can't sack it. Sure. Okay, so attack for three. So next next turn, do I have lethal? I'm gonna hit them. They're gonna have seven. In fact, they're they're dead if I draw a land or a creature, because I could draw land counter on this with Bliss's ability. Creature sack the creature. So, being dead to a lander creature is, you know, hard to ask for much more. I guess they're all, I can also just cauldron again. So maybe, yeah, am I, are they just dead to the cauldron in my hand? They're not, because I, I, I won't have the ballista anymore. So yeah, that doesn't actually work. Notably, if I brick, I can't attack, though. Not bricking, though. It's actually two, two creatures. It may look like we're missing lethal, but we can uh, ping with Ballista here for, for lethal. Drawing Ballista? I mean, Ballista counts as a creature. Yeah, Infect is back, huh? It's actually really good that we're beating, like, basically all of the non-bean decks, too, since we're so geared for the bean decks. Yeah, Crusader solos modern, basically. <laughs> More or less. The pillars of the modern format, bean, grief, beanstalk. Bean, grief, and beanstalk. <laughs> beanstalk twice? <laughs> You gonna bolt my grave crawler? Yeah, I know you are. Is the players don't know how to do anything besides pull to point their bolt at the one drop. Literally better than Ragavan, by the way. Hmm. 
Hmm. I guess I'm slamming the Crusader since I have something else I... That's good if they have a counter spell, or, you know, that I don't want them to counter the cauldron. If they counter spell this, like, they... I can play around spell pierce. Oh, just main deck scolding, okay. Are they gonna merc tide me? It's pretty good. Seven seven. Okay, that's also kind of like the best draw. Do I play Gravecrawler? Playing Gravecrawler is better for Carrion Feeder, but... Will I need it for Cauldron? Not really. I might need it for Cauldron, actually. Let's, let's leave it in the yard. Mutavolt? What the fuck? For Flame of Anor? Dude, come on. Get out of here. Wow, wild. Guess we lose. The challenges? I haven't seen it, it's very cool. How many mutavolts is it? How many flames is it? Feels bad because if I play the cauldron on the turn we play crusader, we get to play around. Um, uh, they're so close to being dead. They're just not quite dead. I I, I can deal them. Okay, well yeah, I guess counter spells too. But I could kill the the mutavolt. Oh, they're playing narset also, so they're not even. They're probably not even a ragavan deck, huh? One Mutavolt, four planes. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Needle Mutavolt so they can't flame of a norm. Okay, um. I'm gonna play the Tragic Slips. They are probably bringing in Graveyard Hate, so, like, maybe Cutting on Earth is fine. I'm down to trim a Priest. I'm trying to trim a Ballista. Trim an Unearth. Sorry, Shaka's mother in law. <laughs> Chucky, you have to explain I, that I'm a good man. I'm an honest man. I just was surprised by Mutavolt's Flame of Anor. I'm an honest man. <laughs> I try my best not to swear, but sometimes I get Flame of Anor. No children. I feel like it's just too bad against their Unholy Heats, probably. Was it Ping Mutavolt plus Exile Ballista Pump Crusader Double Strike Ping Lethal without counter? Crusader doesn't have Double Strike, my friend. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't that good. <laughs> it ain't it's good, it ain't that good. Uh fetch lands are for blood gas. Like you, you, you go like sack blood gas to carrying feeder, play fetch land, return blood cast, sack it, crack fetch land, sack it again. Yeah, that's mirror and crusader. It does have first strike though. I think I'll save the Takanuma in this kind of spot. We'll go upkeep bowmaster. Or respond to consider. Stone. Stone's pretty good against me. We get our Crusader down. Can buff it with a Scorn Blade Berserker too. Sulfur Falls, huh? Never seen that uh, art of Sulfur Falls either. So let's go ahead and sack the Berserker here.
So yeah, so Bloodgast still uh, is good versus a counter spell here. I think I will just again save the Takanuma though. I don't think we're firing up Inkmoth this turn. Okay, so that's six in fact, so we you know technically could have lethal in fact next turn. Subtlety? Okay. That is a, a blue blocker for the Crusader. It does have first strike, of course. Um let's just two two ballista now. Take a sweet hammer, I think we're in the sauce and start to lose our sense of direction. Yeah, maybe. We have a good record today, at least. They have a Merc Tide, though. Cauldron would be nice. Another Berserker. Eats a Counterspell. No good attacks here, unfortunately. Three mana. Three mana just kill Ballista. Dead on to seven. Very odd that they wouldn't Narset first here. I don't really get it. Maybe an Archimedes Charm, though. Yeah, we don't really have anything going on. I don't really know how we get out of this with this top deck. The, st the stone is, like, so crazy here, too. So they also have a Lightning Bolt now. Oh, right, because the Ballistic Kills Narset, that's why they did it in the order. Oh, I mean, it only pings it twice, but that is why. So their last card is relevant? I, I, I guess maybe I should have supposed to Ink Moth block here. They have the bolts, so I don't know. So I can make them bolt the Ink Moth Nexus, potentially. I'm gonna steal my orc army. They are stealing my orc army. So I'm dead if I attack with everything because of the hall. I guess they don't necessarily have a land for hall. Yeah, let's uh, let's not play around land for hall. Well, the thing is, I guess they just don't have to bolt my ink moth though. Yeah, let's leave this back then. It's gonna be an interesting game to win. And his bolt two mystery cards. They like immediately start to tap two mana. So like a sack the stone maybe. Do I think green black infect is a good spot? Of course not. They're probably like, this deck. This deck has like a good plan B. Green black infect doesn't have a good plan B. Does that make sense? Kind of an insane draw. Yeah, the, the card Frexian Crusader is good. And so this is a playable Frexian Crusader deck that has a good plan, or a reasonable solid plan B when you don't draw Crusader, then the Crusader plan is strong. It, it, Green Black, in fact, like, needs to draw Crusader every single game and also needs to get to three mana and draw Crusader every game, which is not something you can really guarantee in Modern at the moment. Okay, so I know that they have a Lightning Bolt. When am I casting this Orcish Bowmaster? I think there's a very good chance they animate Hall of the Storm Giants. So I could maybe try to get it in after that. If my opponent plays like a draw card draw spell, 
Yeah, one life, nine in fact. <laughs> They're gonna bolt my ink moth. <sighs> Tough. Close game. Animated land attack, it made sense. Yeah. Elder Deep Fiend in the bean stack. Oh, just like with Bloodbraid Elf and stuff. Oh fuck, no, that does make sense. Do you have a list? No, yeah, oh wow, that's actually, I don't know, how did I miss it? Because we kept talking about Elder Deep Fiend in a bean deck, or like, well, what bean deck is going to have creatures to emerge? Just the Bloodbraid Elf, Elf, Blood Elf deck, obviously. Yeah, we may have to try that out. I always love an idea that makes me facepalm, because I didn't think of it. Those are the best ones. Yeah, you can emerge off Flash Solitudes too. No, like LD Fiend actually seems great in that deck. Is LD Fiend good anymore? It seems insane in that deck. It's like you evoke it off Solitudes too. I know it's like I know funny to say, but it it, it does seem pretty ridiculous. Yeah, you can emerge off of a uh, evoked incarnation too. It also it also wins the game super fast too, which is like certainly something that you wanted. It, it like not only is it like good, it seems good in the deck, it also seems to solve a problem too. Oh, sorry, I don't, I don't need to, don't mean to be F six here. I'm not sure what we're cutting for it though. You probably play like two copies exactly. You maybe be uh, uh, over sixty. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about some more, of course. So let's play Carrion Feeder first. This kind of makes them do something more than any of my other plays because if they don't, I get I start to get counters on the feeder, right? Why not just play seventy cards? You could you could play seventy cards like they're. We'll we'll figure it out. Also, like there's you don't have to play seventy exactly. You can play more than sixty and less than seventy. There's a lot of ins and outs to the case. So I can I can sa I can use priest of the forgotten gods here. Yeah, let's let's do it. So this way I can cast my cauldron and make sure cauldron gets to resolve. And then I think I'll just go main phase, activate cauldron, and play around a second on holy heat. Not like the best use of priest, I suppose, but we have a blood gas in our hand, and feels okay. Your bean deck. I took out nexus and put approach to the second sun for mirror match. Whatever mirror, I don't care. <laughs> that it's not. It doesn't make approach to the second sun good. I will, I, I actually, like, can we just mute Approach of the Second Sun? Like, I just don't want to see that card in my chat ever again. It's just so silly. How do you, how do you mute, though? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't know how to mute chat. <laughs> This is your last chance to say approach until a mod maybe figures it out for me, huh? <laughs> a lot of every seven messages. Hmm. That's pretty flavorful. <laughs> Mods, please. Is mute not, uh, how do you mute? Uh, we have muted words. I did slash. Hmm. I'm looking at the commands. I can't, I can't figure it out. I guess we, I guess it's, uh, <laughs> I guess it's legal still. 
Grape Crawler is not a bad pickup. One Piece is real. Y'all, I started watching the live action One Piece. I have really bad news. I like it. This show is pretty dang enjoyable. I might start watching the anime. Red with the two months. Thank you. Horrible news. The show's good. It's just so simple and fun. I don't know. I watched live action now, 260 episodes into the anime. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna try to like read the manga instead of watch the anime, but yeah, no, I seem to be doomed probably. Was there not a reason to put like five counters on Bloodgas eating with the carrion feeder? Uh, Bloodgas is not a zombie, so we we don't have a second zombie for Grave Crawler. Is Elder Deep Fiend playable? Being it seems very good in the like Bloodbraid Elf version of the deck. Just like you have the Charlotte's Agents to evoke, good with Solitude. It's just kind of, it seems great, honestly. It might be what the deck is missing, too. Okay, we need to draw a creature really, really badly so we can start uh, Priesting. Although, yeah, maybe Ballista would be really nice because we could kill something first. Bowmaster, same thing. Inkmoth gets the job done at least. You know, still need help. Uh, I mean, this certainly qualifies as help. Yeah, I did already play my land that turn, the Ink Moth Nexus. Just want to get another counter on the, the Ballista so I can do extra damage against your removal spell. Okay, so opponent's down to seven. I am on a two turn clock here. So if they have another removal spell, I'm pretty unlikely to be able to win if I can't activate Priest of the Bloodgast. So this is not a zombie, so I can't Priest of the Bloodgast, I guess. I can beat a counter spell, not a removal spell here, though, because I just like level up, or I just put a counter on the Blister with the land and then attack for four ping them three times I don't I don't really see any other play here like the fact that my opponents like thinking though means that they almost definitely have a removal spell so I, I should be dead Ah, that's what they have. Eyelid hoping to draw a removal spell. I guess I... Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Okay, up a game. So in three tragic slips, minus a Ballista, minus a Priest, minus an Unearth. Was our plan last time against, like, the, the bigger control deck seems better against regular Merktide. Think Prowse is good at modern right now? I don't. I think it's very bad against the Bean deck and like mediocre against Prowse at best. I guess it gets scam at best. And I think it's um and like if you're not if you're not like you know good against one of those two decks, like you probably don't want to be playing a deck in modern. Or that deck in modern. Do you think scales is good against the beans? No. Scales was much better against four color omnath before up the beanstalk got printed. Um I've been meaning to like try to figure out a game plan for scales against four color. Not really sure what to do. Not sure I understand Crusader. Just it just like is basically impossible to remove, and this deck can like turn it into a ballista or carrying feeder to like kill opponent quickly. Yeah, a lot of people have come in, looked at the deck, try to understand what the combo is, but 
Crusader is just like a nightmare card to play against for the four color Omnath builds. Especially in this deck where you can buff it. It is just like unkillable, difficult to block. Neoform deck with Allosaurus Rider, Merktide, and Bean. Um, well, not we haven't played Neoform in those shells before. Like one thing is like you can't play Shardless Agent to like reliably get the Bean either. But uh, I I have yet to play a Merktide Bean deck. I've seen some people play Merktide Bean decks. They they mostly look like they're missing something. But I certainly wouldn't mind trying to figure that out at some point. Could have been good to hold the Tragic Slip here, because we have the Bowmaster, but I think it's just too likely this gets Delirium and then deals me a ton of damage and, you know, surveils for them a lot, right? Did you ever commandeer a Neoform? <laughs> I haven't, that sounds great, though. Then we need to find out a good plan versus four color, because the matchup for your skills is fucked. Against the Cascade build, you can try to play uh, the for your Force of Vigors, and then, like, and see how that goes, and I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be great. I think we jam a cauldron here. Can help us pressure Murktide. We have two cauldrons, so we don't mind so much if the first one gets countered. Reason time more shell is technically Murktide Bean. I mean, there's a copy of Murktide in it that I think you probably shouldn't have in the deck, but. So they're playing a 5 5 Murktide here. So I guess we're jamming Crusader. Smart of them to exile uh, the creatures from the R2. And so then if our Cauldron resolves, we can attack for three, then attack for four with two pings available, which is gonna be one in fact short. But there also, this is also a four turn clock with, unless they have, find a bolt. So maybe we don't need to be too worried. Can we play Charlotte in the Neoform deck just to tutor out Neoform? No, because if you hit Neoform with like no creature in play, it does nothing. And, and if you want a three mana Neoform, you could just put Eldritch Evolution into your deck. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I wonder what they're thinking about. It would be cool though if if, if you could go Charlotte into Neoform and sack the Shardless, which you can't. You could get uh Goblin Dark Dweller, flash it back, put Primeval Titan into play, or, you know, the six stop drop of your choice. This Cauldron beat Dress Down. Um, if it's activated after... It's probably a layers thing, but... Opponent is deep in the tank, dude. They play a Channeler. They play a Misty Rainforest. And they pass. Leaving me very confused, like what their hand could possibly be. If they have, like, how could they possibly have a counter spell? Like, what could they possibly be thinking about? <laughs> if if they have a counter spell in their hand, bolts me. Yeah, okay. Thinking about lightning bolt does make sense. They could get Delirium here also, but I could potentially, if they hit a creature, like exile the creature to with Cauldron. Cascade Bean with Tamashi combo, or is Lotus Bloom not worth cascading into? I don't know, maybe. I, I wouldn't hate cascading into a Lotus Bloom. But like, how are you triggering Bean in your Tamashi deck? Yeah, let's just go to Exile the Channeler. I actually I have Lethal next turn just with the Ballista activation on the Crusader, and there's not really much they can do about it besides like a dress down, I guess. Those asking what is the deal with this deck? This is the deal with the deck. We attack for three, then we get to go Ballista on zero. Um, Cauldron the Ballista, activate the cru the Ballista ability on the Crusader, hit for five, ping three times with infect damage. So if they don't have a uh, another Murktide Regent, they're dead. If they do have another Murktide Regent, we're probably dead. They only have one card. I guess we lose to Odawara also. So we drew a land, so I suppose we can play the Supplier. Maybe they have a counter spell with uh, that pause. Pause. 
I also hit carry and feeder here. I guess doesn't really matter a ton. Okay, so four one into three two, really not too bad. Uh, let's let's go again though. I really want to play against the, <laughs> the stupid bean deck, but it, it is a good news that we're like we're seven and three against you know we played against Gorio's bean, but like the fact that we're just not doing so bad against the rest of the field is kind of a big deal for a deck like this.